that is the blessed hope of a child of God. Blessed hope is that one of these days, trumpet's going to sound, and uh, the Lord is coming after His children. We'll continue to deal with the thought of the second coming of Christ this morning. I'm going to try to give you some things that's going to help you to understand in your mind and in your heart how kind of things the way things go when the Lord comes back. Nobody knows everything about it. Nobody knows the day or the hour when the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back. But one thing is for certain, He is going to come. He said, if I go away, I'll come again. So He went away, and so we know He's going to come again. Look in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. The great passage of Scripture here on the rapture of the church is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. The word rapture means caught up, catch, catch away. And you find that there in verse uh, uh, 14, 15, 16, uh, 17, and 18. Now let's look at verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. Boy, that's a great statement, isn't it? You know, the Lord don't want us to be ignorant. Somehow or another, we've got this idea that the more ignorant you are, the more spiritual you are. And I know how we got that because education tends many times to cause a person to lose faith in the Bible. But it don't always if it's the right kind of education. Uh, I would not have you be ignorant. The Lord, sometimes we brag about our ignorance as if, as if that meant, boy, we were really something. People say, boy, I'm, I'm just an ignorant old... You know, it's not a sin to be ignorant. If you can't help it. But it's a sin to be ignorant if you can help it. It's not a sin to be ignorant, it's a sin to stay ignorant. One old guy got up there and he said, I just keep getting ignoranter and ignoranter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One old timer guy said, Boy, if ignorance is bliss, I'm a blizzard. But, you know, that ain't nothing to brag about, really. You've got a Bible and you've got a brain. You can read. You need to read your Bible and find out what it says. Don't stay ignorant all your life. And the second coming of Christ is something that you should not be ignorant of. When I first got saved, I didn't know anything about the second coming of the Lord. I always thought that one of these days the Lord would come back and blow everything up. Some go to heaven, some go to hell, and that'd be it. I had no idea what was really going to happen. I didn't understand verses like one time he'd say he's going to come like a thief in the night, another time he'd say every eye's going to see him. What about them two verses? Thief the night, everybody don't see him. He's come and gone before you even know he's been here. Every eye shall see him. You know what that means? That means the second coming of Christ is in two parts. Just like the first coming of Christ was in two parts. The first coming of Christ was in two parts. He came at night in Bethlehem's manger and only believers knew he was here. Isn't that right? He didn't appear to the world. The second part of his first coming was to the, everybody when he was 30 years old at his baptism. He appeared to everyone. That is the second part of the first coming. The second coming is in two parts. The first part of the second coming is as a thief in the night comes and takes his children home. The second part of the second coming is every eye shall see him. The book of Revelation says. So it all fits that way and you don't have to twist the Scriptures to fit what you believe. You should never twist the Scripture to match what you think it says. You should always bend what you think to match the Scripture. Now the way people have cults and false doctrine and heresy is they get their mind made up what they think and then they make all the Bible cram into their mold. That ain't going to work. The Word of God is not bound. Let me tell you what we are here at this church. And if you think we're anything different, you're in for the shock of your life. You know what you're in here this morning? You are in a group of people this morning that is number one, saved by the grace of God and loves Jesus. And number two, believes that this Bible is the final authority in all matters of faith and practice. We believe that whatever this Bible says is right if it higher lips your grandma. That's what we believe. Amen. 
We believe if I say one thing, the Bible says another thing. I'm wrong and the Bible's right. Uh, we believe if, if the Bible says one thing and an angel appeared in your bedroom and told you something else, that angel can go jump in the lake and the Bible's still the Word of God. That's what we believe. That's what kind of church you're in this morning. You say, I thought this was Baptist. Oh, that's third or fourth away down the line somewhere. We're number one Christians. We're number two Bible believers. Baptist fits on down there somewhere. It ain't. Uh, uh, somebody said, "Boy, I'm, I'm glad I got. I'm glad the Lord got me for the Baptist deal. I wouldn't have been much, would I? You know, uh, I'm glad the Lord got me. Now listen, listen. We're a Bible believer. We believe that the Baptists say something. The Bible says something else. That the Baptists can go jump the moon, over the moon if they want to, and let God be true and every man a liar. Now, now you know where you are, okay? You don't ever have to worry about a place like this. We ain't going to hurt you. I'll tell you where you better watch out. You better watch out for that guy that says, Oh, it's so nice to see all of you. You better watch a crook that talks like that. The Lord is in His holy temple and all the earth keeps silence before Him. Amen. Amen. Man, you're a nut if you love listening to people talk like that. You know why? Because nobody talks like that in their right mind. That guy's putting on an act. Anybody that acts like that, they're acting, man. That ain't real. You know what I do up here on Sunday? This is, this is me. This is, my, this, this is the way I talk at home. This, this is the way I talk. When uh, we're at the camp, this, this my, it, it comes natural. I'm not putting on an act. I'm not putting on. I ain't holding back. I'm just saying exactly what comes. We, there's a difference between real Christianity and fake religion. There's a difference. There's a difference. And deep down inside, you know there's a difference. You know there is. This morning, brother, this book said, I don't want you to be ignorant. Concerning the second coming of the Lord, look at verse number 13. Concerning them which are asleep, that's Christians who have died. The Bible refers to them as sleep because their body is asleep in the grave. Their soul is with the Lord. I can prove that. I'll prove it here in just a second. That you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with Him. There, that verse is saying, them, them people that's asleep in the Lord, grandma, grandpa, whoever died, when Jesus comes, He's going to bring them with it. Now we know where their body is. It's in the grave. What's He going to bring? He's going to bring their soul. If you died this morning and you're saved, if you died this morning in this church and you're saved, your soul would leave your body and go to be with the Lord. The Bible does not teach that a soul sleeps. The Bible does not say that a soul sleeps. Your body sleeps in the grave. So your soul goes up to be the Lord We'd take your body down here to one of these uh, memorial parks, nice thing for graveyard, and, and bury you. We'd put you in there and bury you and cover you up. That's simply your, your body. And um, your, your soul would go home to be with the Lord. Now, now what's going to happen when Jesus comes is your body's going to come up out of the grave, your soul will come back with the Lord, and they meet. They meet to get you a new body. Look at verse number um, 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain in the coming of the Lord shall not prevent. That means get ahead of, get in front of, prevent. Old English word there, just right. Them which are asleep. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up. There's where the word uh, rapture comes from. It means called up. We shall be called up, snatched. That's what that means. Um, up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, scare one another with these words. That ain't what it says, is it? It's not supposed to scare you. It's supposed to what? Comfort you. People say... Now, don't start talking about Jesus coming back. That scares me. Now, something's wrong in your life. If you're living for the Lord, that don't
don't scare you, that comforts you. Amen? Let's talk about this morning a little bit about the order of events at the rapture. If the rapture occurred today, here's what would happen. Just that, Brother Roy. Here's what would happen if the rapture occurred today. Basically, there's two things that happen at the rapture. When the Lord comes, when the trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ rise, basically two things take place. There's the translation of the living saints. There's the resurrection of the dead saints. Our bodies are translated to get our new body. Their bodies are resurrected to get their new body. We all get our new body at the same time. Now, let's go by the order of events this morning. If the Lord were to come back today, the first thing would happen would be the Bible says, first thing is the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Now, think about that this morning. I, I, know, I know all of these Hollywood movies about Jesus portray Him as a blue-eyed, red-headed hippie kind of guy who goes around like he's spaced out on dope. Every movie you ever see with Jesus in it, he's got white skin and red hair. How many Jews have you ever seen with white skin and red hair? And uh, that's the way Hollywood does it anyway. That's a Catholic view of Jesus. He didn't look like that. He's a true, full-blooded Jew. He had brown skin and black, straight hair. That's the way, that's, uh, that's the way a blue, true-blooded Jew looked back in them days. Now, here he comes. But here's the way he comes on, on TV. He comes in like this. And he comes out like this. He's got uh, reddish colored hair and little hands like a woman. And he's sitting there and he says, Blessed is the pure in heart, for they shall see the kingdom of God. You ever seen these movies? That's the way they make him look. The Lord, they can't imagine the Lord doing this. Hey! Can you imagine Jesus doing that? You say, no, you got the wrong idea of Jesus. I just read to you out of the Bible that the Lord's going to descend from heaven with a shout. Now, I don't, I don't know if I can do that this morning. Let's just say He's descending from heaven with a shout. He's, he's going to do something like this. Hey! I can't as He's coming down. Man, that's going to be wild, buddy. The Lord's going to come. He's not going to send a backslid angel down here after us. He's not going to get out one of the old prophets and say, Hey, how about going down there and pick up my, my, my son's bride? And bring her. He's coming after him as his self. The Bible said the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Here He comes. Down through the stratosphere and ionosphere and vast planets and ever, ever what else is out there. And boy, He's going to come down through the sky. That'll be the first thing that happens. He's going to say, Let's go! Come on, baby! Come on, let's go! And every single person that is saved is going to hear that shout from heaven. I tell you what, the world's going to hear some kind of a loud boom like that. You say, where do you get that? When the Lord spoke at the tomb and the Bible said, the Lord heard the Father speak, but they that around Him said, it thundered. You say, the Lord really used a loud voice? You know what I read in the Bible? I just read it this morning, I believe. Over in the book of John, where, where the Lord was getting ready to let, raise Lazarus from the dead, and Lazarus had been dead four days, and the Lord said, the Bible said he cried with a loud voice. You ever read that in John chapter 9? The Lord cried with a loud voice. You see, the Jesus of this modern generation is not the Jesus of the Bible. The Jesus of the Bible was a man. He was not a wimp. He was a man. He had calluses on his head. There was not a sissy bone in his body. Amen? He sweat, brother. He knew what it was to work. I'm glad my Savior was a man. That's a bad word nowadays. That's a bad word nowadays. You say that nowadays, people say, oh, he's a, he's, he's, you're a chauvinist. No, I'm a preacher who knows that my Savior was a man. Thank God. Smile, God loves you. If you didn't watch, if you didn't watch Phil Donahue so much, you could handle stuff like this. Wouldn't bother you a bit when somebody tells the truth. Boy, I'll tell you what, but he's coming. He's coming. He's coming with a shout. He's coming with a shout. I can see him there at the tomb of Lazarus said, Lazarus! He didn't have to holler that loud. 
He could have just he could have just snapped his finger and Lazarus got up. Somebody said one time said the Lord uh, the reason the Lord said Lazarus got up uh, come forth. Uh, he said he had to call him by name because if he'd have just said come forth, everybody in the graveyard had got up. Wouldn't that have been wild? That's what's going to happen one of these days. Amen. He's going to call them up. He's going to call them up. You say, boy, we took Grandma out there and it was cold that day that we buried her and it was snowing and it was an awful time. But yeah, we don't have to sorrow as others that have no hope. The Lord's going to come from heaven with a shout. He's going to holler, come on. Grandma's body's coming up out of that grave and brother, her soul's going to come back with the Lord. Grandma's going to get that body. We'll see them, brother. We'll be re- united with our loved ones when the Lord comes back one of these days. Hey, you, want me, you want me to give you some good news? That might happen today. Hallelujah. That might happen today. You say, that scares me. That means you better be getting ready. You, you'll be left here all by your lonesome, man. I'm telling you what, you better get ready to go with us. We're going home. We're going home. You say, Brother Danny, did the Lord really try and cry and, and, and Lazarus hear his voice? He's dead. I heard about a rock concert with somebody said one time this hippie blew a trumpet so loud that it busted some people's eardrums. If man can make an instrument and put it over a PA system and so design it that it has enough decibels to bust somebody's eardrum, our Lord wouldn't have no trouble making a trumpet that could wake up dead people. Amen. I believe he's going to. I believe he will because he said the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout. Then let's notice it says, the dead in Christ shall rise first. No such thing as soul sleep. Do you know what the thief on the cross said? He said, Lord, remember me when you come to your kingdom. And the Lord said, today you'll be with me in paradise. He said, I'll just see you in just a little bit. I'll meet you down there. Uh, we're in Abraham's bosom and, and we're going to have a good time of fellowship. And buddy, that old boy, his soul didn't sleep the second that thief died. Brother, Jesus had to die first. Or that old thief wouldn't have went nowhere. <laughs> He'd have went the other way if Jesus hadn't died first. <laughs> but he called on and the Lord said, Jesus died for him. Here went the thief coming down. They like that fella. They like that fella uh, who always told his wife, he said, uh, I got all this money. He said, ain't nobody going to get my money. And she said, well, you're going to die and leave it. He said, no, I ain't. I'm going to take it with me. She said, you're crazy. You can't take your money with me. He said, I'm going to. She said, you're not going to do it now. When you take your, just, 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 you're not going to do it. Nobody can take your money. You know, I, I don't understand people that die, uh, die leaving money. That's a dumb thing to do. I don't even understand people that leave it all to their kids. To let them, you know, if you leave it all to your kids, they'll be hoping you die. That's awful. I'm going to have to let that sink in there for a minute. You're wicked, man. You're deep down, boy, I wish daddy would hurry up and die so I could get my... You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Some of you sitting right here this morning stall stuff like that. Man, if I was you, I wouldn't will them nothing. I'd give it to the Lord's work, put it in missionary, or tell them to sell it and put the land, build a church building. I do do something smart with it, man. Use your head. Picture yourself in heaven over here, looking back and saying, "What do I wish now I'd have done back on earth?" But this guy he ordered, he said, "I'm going to take it with me." And his wife said, "Oh no, you're not going to take it with you." He said, "I'm going to put it up there in the attic, and when the Lord comes back or I die, I'm going to get it on my way up." She said, you're crazy. He put all of his money up in the attic and he said, when I go up now, I'm going to grab it and go up with him and take it with me as I go. She said, you can't take it with you. He said, I sure can. And she waited, he waited, waited, waited. And uh, finally, sure enough, one day he died. And uh, his wife, she said, I'm just going to go look if he really got to take that money with him. Everybody's talking about it. They went upstairs where he hid his money and they looked, opened up a chest. Sure enough, there's all his money. His wife said, I know it. He went the other way. He should have put it in the basement, shouldn't he? <laughs> but the truth is, you ain't going to take it with him no matter which way you go. You're going, you know how you're going to leave here? In your birthday suit. That's right. You're going to leave out just like you came in, man. Nothing. And all that's going to matter is going to be whether you're ready to hear that voice sound. Will you be ready? Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, snatched. You know why the dead in Christ rise first? Because we got a six-foot head start on them. 
They're going to come up within a moment and a twinkling of an eye and come back with the Lord at the re- revelation. He that liveth and believeth in me, the Lord said, shall never die. You ever read that verse in John 11, 25 and 26? He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, dead in Christ, yet shall he live. And whoso liveth, the ones that still alive and believeth in me, shall never die. That's what's going to happen. You're coming up, you'll never, ever, ever die and go to be with the Lord. Now let's think about how suddenly that could happen this morning. Think about it. They say that we're going up in the rapture, the Bible said in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. You think about this. They say that light travels. How fast, kids? All you kids from Nebo. There you go. 186,000 miles per second. Now, according to the Word of God, we're going to leave here. We're going to... Well, I mean, you, can just, you say, oh, well, that's just a figure. No, I don't want you to think of that as a figure. Think about that, man. That's, that is moving. 186,000 miles a second? It ain't, but uh, how far is it around the world? 25,000 miles, something like that? It ain't but 25,000 miles around the world. It can go 186,000 miles in one second. We're like, all right, light. Get on your mark. Get set. Go. Stop. 186,000 miles. Like that. The Bible said in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. People say, well, I'm on the way till I see him coming and I'm going to get down and pray. No, man, you won't even have time to... Blink your eye. You say, yeah, it said it said twinkling of an eye, right? You know how slow it takes you to blink your eye? They say you blink your eyes, the average person, 25 times a minute. Some people blink, you know, a whole lot into it all the time. I mean, they've met on, on something wrong with them or something. But the average person blinks 25 times a minute. Stare down and you blink like that. And it takes like a fifth of a second blink. That means that if you blink 25 times a minute and you drive on a trip that's a 10 hour trip at 55 miles an hour, you you go 33 miles with your eyes shut. That's wild. <laughs> it ain't no wonder everybody's getting killed out there now. People driving 33 miles with their eyes shut. That's unbelievable, isn't it? You know, I got thinking about that, and I said, man, I've just about went 33 miles straight with mine shut. I was coming up the road the other night, and I, you know, I just count five. Hold, let me close my eyes for five seconds, and then open them up, because my eyes was burning, and I was so sleepy. But did you know, listen, brother, that's, that's slow. That's slow. You know how fast you're going to leave when Jesus comes? Speed of light. It's like, yeah, like a flash of light. Illustration. If I could stand, they say... And hold a rifle like this right here. And hold it chest high and fire that rifle at the speed of light. 186,000 miles a second. And that bullet would travel. There wasn't no mounts or nothing. And it went all the way around the world, back around this way, and come back right here. And just kept going. The same height, speed of light, that I could go, bow! And at the speed of light, it would travel around the world and go through my body seven times before I could fall over. That's, that's swoop, you know it. I'm telling you. I mean, you think about this. Is it? Bow! Brrr, I mean, before you can fall over, it went through you seven times. That's how fast it's going to be when Jesus comes. It's like that. What if that happened this morning? You ready to go? What if He came back today? I'm telling you this morning, friend, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. No time for anything. As the days of Noah, they were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying and giving in marriage. The days of Lot, the homosexual crowd and the drinking crowd and the partying crowd, they're saying they, the Bible said they knew not till the flood came and took them all away. Can you imagine one of these days? The secretary will be behind the desk. The streets will be busy. Horns blowing, interstates full, boats headed for the lake, campers for the mountain, shopping malls will be filled, the plants and factories will be busy and the machines running. 
School buses will be running, kids getting off, saying hello to their friends. Suddenly, a great, great big noise like a thunder. And everybody hears it all at the same time, and people say, what was that? What was that? In another part of the world, it'll be nighttime. Two will be asleep. One's going to be taken and the other will be left. And then he'll think it's thunder and just turn over and go back to sleep. Till in the morning, Mama comes in the, in the baby's room and looks and her baby's gone. She runs back in there and says, Honey, 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 the baby's gone. And she begins to scream and run through the house. It's gone. My baby's gone. And brother, they check all the doors and they've all been locked. And nobody's been in and nobody's been out. That husband who may be sitting here this morning who's laughed at your wife for coming to church and made fun of her for believing the Bible. Well, hear that boom and you wake up and say, What in the world was that? And look around and your wife is gone. We're looking at teenagers, and they're gone. You say, oh, you kids go to church too much. You're carrying it too far. You're fanatic and all of that. And brother, you can't find them. Jesus has come. They've gone. And now you're left behind to go through the awfulest time period that the world has ever known. Jesus said there never had been a time like it, nor they ever would be again. I like those little stickers that people put on the glove compartment box. And it says, in case of rapture, this vehicle will be, the driver will disappear, you know, something like that. Man, people sit in there and look at that thing and say, what does that mean? You say, that means if Jesus comes, I'll be gone. You can, you want, you can have the car if you want. You better grab it quick, though. I said, hey, man, you're some kind of freak. Let me out of here. <laughs> something like that. But you know something? It's just the way it's going to be. It's just the way it's going to be. People won't realize it. And there, I ain't got time to deal with it this morning because I'm going to quit. And I'm telling you, next Sunday morning, we're going to talk about how close we are to this thing happening in the sign. You say, well, I just don't see it that way, preacher. I know why you don't because you ain't been taught right. It ain't my fault. Don't get mad at me. Open your eyes, man. Open your heart. Let the Word of God say what it says. You realize that any time this day, Jesus could come back. You don't realize it until it's too late. Are you ready? Are you ready today, young people? Ask yourself the question. Am I ready? Let's stand with our heads back. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. I'd like to ask you a question this morning while people are praying. Are you ready? Nobody knows your heart. This is between you and God. Is there somebody here this morning that say, Preacher, it scares me when you start talking about the rapture and Jesus coming back. It really scares me because deep down inside, I don't. I'm, it bothers me because I don't know if I'm ready to go or not. And I want you to pray for me this morning. Please pray for me. I don't want to miss it. I want to be ready when Jesus comes. Can we pray for you this morning? Just slip up your hand. Take it right back down. God bless you, young man. God bless you, sir. God bless you over there. I see you. Anybody else? Raise your hand. God bless you, sir. Amen. Thank you for being honest. Thank you for being honest. Now, can I ask you a question this morning? You that lifted your hand, what are you waiting on? Every day you wait, it's getting closer to Jesus coming. Every day. Every day. What if it's today? 
What if he's coming today? You be ready. We're going to pray this morning. And I'm going to pray for you that lifted your hand. Why don't you take that next step this morning and just get out of your seat and make your way down here to this altar and say, I'm sick and tired of this. I'm going to really, I'm really going to get my life right with God and live for Him. Some's already coming this morning, or one or two. There may be others. There may be others. He says, I want to be ready when Jesus comes. Heavenly Father, do what ought to be done in our hearts. Thank you for these that are coming. Pray, dear God, that you'd help others who really, really, really need to be around this altar and getting right with thee. Help them to come this morning. We'll love you and praise you. In Jesus' name.